In this video, I'm gonna chat about the Starrett Altissimo 24 inch height gauge. So a traditional height gauge looks something like this, right? There's a couple different ways you can use them. One, you could use the scriber attachment, right? You'd zero it on the table, and then you can measure the height of something. Now the downside to this, and the reason you typically don't do it this way, is that you can vary the amount of force applied. So as I adjust this, I could get different readings. If I turn this all the way, this will lift off the table. Now obviously that's bad, but there's a kind of a range of different readings. Similar to using a pair of calipers, you can kind of put a little more force on them to get a, a better or worse reading. Now, the way we avoid that with the height gauge is by putting a test indicator on the height gauge. What we're gonna do here is when we zero on the table, we're gonna also zero this indicator, right? So that way we can know we're applying the right amount of force and get good results for the height of things. The downside to the indicator is that you're zeroing to one side of the probe. So say you wanted to measure the height of the bottom of this slot right here, or you wanted to find the center of it, you can easily get this surface right here with this instrument, but to get the underside of here, you've got to take into account the, the diameter of the probe and add that to add or subtract to your reading. It's possible, but it's just a couple extra steps. Now, I said all that to get to this machine. This machine will do it for you. You can really think of this as a single axis CMM. Now, we can see we've got a probe right here. This machine, you're turning this handle, but you're not applying the force. It's gonna figure out how much force you're applying and beep when it's got what it wants. So this thing actually moves up and down. I know it's beeping like crazy. So I'm gonna hit clear here. I'm gonna go straight into the height mode and I wanna zero it to the table. So I'm gonna lower this all the way down until it beeps. Now I've got some little bars right here that let me know how much force I'm applying. It really doesn't matter, you just wait for the beep. And then I'm gonna hit this F1 button to zero it. And that establishes a datum A. Now you can store three datums in here, but they're not quite like the datums on a drawing, right? This only measures in one axis. What you can use it for though, Say you wanted to know the distance between the center of this slot to the center of this hole, you can make this datum A, make this datum B, and then you can measure from datum B to say over here, or from datum A to over here. It gives you a lot of cool capabilities of different ways you can measure things. So I've zeroed the height on the table, and we're gonna go ahead and take a reading. So I'll measure this block, I'll place it under here, I lower it down until it beeps, and I've got a measurement 1.8763, pretty close to what it should be. Now, if I go measure another point on this block, we get a slightly different number. This is where the hotkey comes in handy. If I press this red button on the side of the machine, it'll tell me the difference between those two points. Now, this also has a total indicator reading function, which is really handy, and I'll get to that in a minute, but it's good for quick measurements to see if two points are different and by how much. Now, like I mentioned before, the really cool thing about this machine is you don't, it's already got the probe diameter calibrated, so I can come in and measure the bottom of this hole, and then I can come in and without doing any math, measure the top. This first number here is a measurement from, or zero, the datum A, the table, to the top of this hole. If I hit this red button, it's gonna tell me the difference between the first point I took, so the bottom of this hole, and this top point. Now, I wanna make it clear that this is not uh, the actual diameter, you would have to make absolutely sure that you are 
at the very bottom of the hole and the very top of the hole. Now there's ways to do that, but it's, it's probably not the best measurement to get a diameter. You really, so the two point measurement with the height function isn't the best way to get a diameter. There's actually another function on here that'll scan and get more points to give you a better diameter. Now, let's move to another function. This is the symbol for position but it really shouldn't be confused, you know, if you're trying to find the position of, say, a hole, this isn't going to capture the actual mating envelope. You're only going to get two point measurements and find the center of that. Now, depending on, you know, your situation in your metrology room, that might be enough, right? If you have like a large bore or something, it's going to be difficult to capture that actual mating envelope anyway. So a couple two-point measurements with this might make you comfortable enough that you can you know, derive position from it. But essentially, this is the, the center uh, point of a diameter or the center point of uh, you know, two opposed surfaces. So let's see how it works. The idea here is we're gonna take two points. So I'm gonna use this block. I'm gonna go to the bottom of this hole right here. And now I'm going to move to the top of it. So this flashing light right here, the center, that's from the table or datum A to the center of those two points we just took. Now, with a circle, whether you take the points at the very top or the very bottom or kind of toward the side, as long as you don't move the piece left or right, you should get a valid center point. Now, of course, I'd, I'd move this between measurements, but the idea is if this stays perfectly still, you're gonna get uh, two points in a line, so you're gonna get the center either way. Now, I did move the part, so this isn't totally valid here. Now, this is, the, uh, again, the center point from the table to the center of that circle. The next one right here is gonna be the distance between the two points. Uh, which may or may not be helpful, right? If I, I could get a valid center if I took two points in line from you know the far side, but I wouldn't get a valid uh, diameter from that. So you, you wanna watch out for that. But it is convenient, say I wanted to find the center of uh, this slot right here. Say I wanted to find the different distance between the center of this slot to the center of this hole. I can actually do about four measurements in a row. So I'm going to undo and clear this. I'm going to take a point on the bottom of the slot, a point on the top. That gives me the center to the table here. Now if I move this out of the way and go from the bottom of this hole to the top of this hole, this is the distance from the table to the center of the hole. If I hit this red button, that's going to be the distance from the last two points I took. So from the top of here to the uh, bottom of here to the top of here. And if I hit it again, this distance, the flashing light, is the distance between the center of the two features. So you can really string things together with this in a way that's really, really handy. Now again, it's only in one axis. And I want to make it clear that if I was inspecting a part for real, I would have this on the angle plate and I wouldn't be moving it around, okay? So this is just for demonstration. You would never want to inspect something like holding it like this on the table and trying to measure it. You'd want to get it secure to something and, you know, have more accurate measurements that way. Now, the next feature our diameter, this is going to scan, uh, very, very similar to a CMM machine. So the idea here, if we want to measure, say, this hole right here, I'm going to put the probe, I'm going to put the probe right about here on the circle, and I'm going to load it up with some tension, so when I turn the wheel, and then the, the probe is going to kind of drop as I move the part, and it's going to scan the bottom of this circle. When I release, it's gonna beep twice. That lets us know it got a good scan. And we're gonna come back up to the top and do the same thing and move it down. And that's gonna give you a pretty accurate diameter measurement, more accurate than a two-point measurement. Now, 
Let's try to get this in action. I'm gonna go to the bottom, this circle, until it beeps. I'm gonna move the part, and you can see the probe right there move down and then back up again. I move the wheel up, you heard it beep twice. Now I'm gonna go to the top of the circle and do the exact same thing. It beeps once, that lets us know, lets us know it's got contact. And I'm just gonna move the part. You can see the probe kind of follow the circle. And I'm gonna move that back down. So it gives us a diameter of 1.248. It's supposed to be 1.25. This is a 3D printed part. That's probably what it is in real life. Really handy function for finding a diameter. Now, again, this isn't the same as putting a gauge pin in the part. We found one diameter for one cross section. But you could you know, do this several times throughout this hole to you know, make yourself comfortable with what you have here. I mean, this thing is so quick that it really wouldn't be that big of a deal to do that you know, five or six times and get enough measurements to make yourself feel comfortable that you have the right diameter. The one thing I'll say, it's not as easy for smaller circles. So, I mean, that's generally fine, right? Anything smaller than like three quarter inch, most shops should have a whole bunch of gauge pins to check the diameter of holes. So I don't see that as a big problem for you know, a larger hole like this. It'd be difficult to find a one and a quarter inch gauge pin. I don't think most shops stock those. Or even if you're dealing with even bigger stuff, again, this has a two foot reach. So you can measure some pretty big things fairly accurate, accurately with this machine. Some of the you know, larger bore is really difficult to measure. I think this makes it pretty easy. The last one, TIR, this will essentially will measure the profile of a flat surface. Okay, so what it's gonna do, hit it right here. Notice it says SCN scan, not point. We're actually gonna scan the surface. So I'm gonna move this back up. I'm gonna place my probe on here until it beeps, and I can just move this around. Right? And it's just taking data when I'm finished. I move it up. This first uh, number right here, if you can see, it's got a little wave with two arrows on it. This is the total indicator reading, so the difference between the highest and the lowest readings. If I hit red button, this is gonna be the distance from our, that datum we established to the highest point, and then this is gonna be the distance from uh, the datum to the lowest point. So let me prove to you, you know, that this works. I'm gonna put a piece of paper under this, so we're gonna get a different measurement from one side to the other. Right, so I have limited mobility here, but I just moved it from one side to the other. We've got a shim going on here. Now we've got a 40 thousandths difference between the high point and the low point. If we come over here, that's the difference between our high and our low, or I'm sorry, the second one is our highest point from the datum, the third one is our lowest point. And again, the first one is the total indicator reading. So pretty handy thing here for just checking flat surfaces. You could use this for checking uh, parallelism, profile, uh, even flatness to a certain degree with, you know, flatness. If it passes, you're good, but if it doesn't pass, you might have to shim the part or do all sorts of shenanigans to get that to work. There's probably easier ways to check flatness, though, than having to use this machine. Now, the next thing I want to chat about are the datums. So I established the table as datum, datum A, but say we, for whatever reason, wanted to put the part in a, a angle block, and we're measuring from this surface now, what I'm gonna do here is go into height mode, lower it to the top of our uh, surface here on the angle plate. I'm gonna hit this rotation for the datums, and then I'm gonna make this datum B, okay? So I can measure the height of this block from datum B. And then if I hit this button right here, I can make a comparison 
to where it would be from datum A. So all sorts of cool things you can do with this. Uh, really, really powerful little machine. We've had these sitting around for a while and just got had the guys from Steric come in and give us some training. Had no idea what it could do. Like I said, it's like a single axis CMM. This thing doesn't work like a typical height gauge. It kind of, uh, you know, it senses the force. It gives you great measurements. But that's it for this video. Just wanted to talk about this machine. I'm really impressed with it. We're going to be using it all the time. It can do a lot of things and very, very simple and easy to use. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below.